you're asking the white majority to do something is difficult. And I think it'd be easier if we just acknowledge that it's difficult. No ethnic majority group in 10,000 years of human history that I can find ever went from being a majority to being a minority and liked it. That's dangerous. Um, when those people are saying Jews will not replace us, Jews will not replace us, that slogan sits on top of a very sick and twisted view that if you bring enough people of color here, we are so deficient, we are so stupid, we are so unwanted that we will be zombies to fill out the, the ranks for some Democratic Party agenda that Jewish people are manipulating and driving forward. That leads to violence. Uh, that puts at risk Jewish people. That puts at risk people of color. It is wrong. And the smug, condescending way that he just spews this poison out yeah. is very, very dangerous because he won't stop Trump, but he's going to outlive Trump by about 50 years. And you're watching the rise of an American demagogue that is a very, very despicable person. Yeah. And I, I'm, I literally, I, I, was, I was shaking listening to him talk because a lot of people don't know that is one step away from Nazi propaganda coming out of his mouth. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the channel. So, you know, sometimes there really is only one right way to say something. You know, it might not be the polite way. It might not be the clean way. But sometimes it really is the only way. And I'll explain everything I mean in a moment. But first, what in the world was Van Jones, the old trickle-down-the-leg Van Jones, so upset about? Apparently, he's upset to hear people talking about anything to do with demographic change in the United States. But here's the thing. He does not deny that it's changing. He just wants to imply that talking about it is somehow inherently racist. And my question to Jones would be, are Democrats allowed to talk about it? And, and I guess I would even ask him if it was racist when he talked about it. Asking the white majority to do something is difficult. And I think it'd be easier if we just acknowledge that it's difficult. No ethnic majority group in 10,000 years of human history that I can find ever went from being a majority to being a minority and liked it. And that's basically the request from the racial justice left is that we want the white majority to go from being a majority to being a minority and like it. That's a tough request. And the reality is that change is hard. Change that you want is hard. Change that is good is hard. Yeah, so I'm, I'm confused. Is it still replacement theory when a non-white, non-Republican person talks about it? What do we call it then? I mean, because apparently... In certain situations, like basically everything else in modern day America, really the Western world, certain people, certain things are allowed and certain people, they're not. And we just have to remember that really everything is racist when you're straight, when you're white, when you're male, especially when you're a Republican. Anything you do and say is racist. And, and that's when Vivek comes in because... That's what all this is about. All of Van Jones' fear, all of his terror comes from when the white supremacist of Indian descent <laughs> shared basically the very, very same sentiment that many on the left have shared. And like I just showed you, even Van Jones himself has acknowledged. So it's obvious, you know, like anything, it's just a dishonest cudgel to whack as many Republicans with as they possibly can. And luckily for us, Vivek Ramaswamy does not easily play that game, and his response is freaking epic. If you told me this five years ago, three years ago, I wouldn't have believed you, but I now have my views that are a product of my experiences. We got to open our eyes to see that disease of dishonesty. The same government that has lied to us about not only what happened on 9-11, but the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq about the basis for the 2008 bailouts and the financial crisis, about the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that never was, about the Hunter Biden laptop story, which we absolutely know to be true, about exactly what happened on January 6th to the origin of COVID-19, to the Nashville transgender shooter manifesto, to how our own money is being spent in Ukraine today. We demand a government that tells us the truth again in this country. That's what we require. We can handle the truth. That's what it means to be a citizen of this country. 
So I say that on that last debate stage to a bunch of Republicans that are shaking in their boots. These are the things you're not supposed to say in the Republican Party even today. And then you get the mainstream media. You got this character Van Jones on CNN afterwards saying, this is the rise of an American demagogue who's going to live 50 years longer than Trump. This is dangerous. I am shaking. That's what he says. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> At a certain point, just shut the fuck up. Van Jones at CNN. We're done with it. And I think you gotta ask yourself, why am I the only candidate in this race who can say certain things? Yeah, so that is, it's strong, it's real good, I, you know. I know a lot of people aren't going to uh, approve of that, but sometimes it's the only way to get it done. And honestly, he's asking a great question. You know, let me know in the comments. You know, why do you guys think that Vivek is able to say basically whatever he wants? To me, I think it's pretty obvious. I think it's because he is not reliant on anyone else for campaign money. And I'm also curious, and this this I really do wonder about. You know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Why has his truthfulness not translated? into primary support. How in the world is someone like Nikki Haley polling above a guy like Vivek Ramaswamy? You know, my, my gut tells me, the left will tell you it's because Republicans are all a bunch of racists, blah, blah, blah. My gut tells me that it's because he's so similar to Donald Trump that the 50 or 60 percent of people that are supportive of Donald Trump in these polls, these are people, you know, people who might be drawn to this, you know, sort of conservative populism, whatever you want to call it, unashamed truth telling or whatever you want to call what is the MAGA brand right now, right? I think if it wasn't for Donald Trump, if Donald Trump just decided he wasn't running anymore, I think most of those people would probably be behind Vivek. I can't imagine those people switching over to a Nikki Haley. So we'll see where all this goes, guys. No one knows what's going to happen with any of these elections. No one knows what kind of dirty tricks are coming down the pipe. We are pretty convinced that there are some. You know, we don't know what kind of surprises or media-fueled election interference is coming, if any. I'd guess that there is. You know, they're going to cover up something. They're going to manipulate something. That's just the way the game is played. But we'll see how it goes. You know, my gut tells me that Vivek and a lot of people just like him really are the future. If not just the party, but the country. They are the future if we're going to have one. But anyway, that's just my opinion, guys. Let me know your take in the comments. And if you haven't already, help us to continue to grow. Please like comment, subscribe, most importantly, share the channel. We'll see you in the next one.